Hey, I'm Daniel, I'm German and I'm weird. And one of my favorite hobbies, as many of you may already know, is just messing around on Google Earth. Because there you can see our world from a different perspective than just from ground level. I zoom in, fly around and sooner or later I always end up in New York. Because honestly, that's my favorite city on the planet, even though I've never visited it. And every time I do so, I notice something new that makes me go, wait, what? Like here for example, check this out. Ramps and loops going over and under each other in the middle of tons of skyscrapers, filling entire city blocks. Or over here, a highway just clinging to the side of Manhattan. It stacks here and there are even buildings on top of it. Like there there's literally no space left, but they still made it work somehow. Simply fascinating stuff. And then I keep asking myself, how do people even drive through this without getting lost? Or do they get lost? New Yorkers let me know. Anyway, and then I wondered, why is everything built like this in the first place? That's when I thought, okay, let's actually dig into this. Because New York is full of these crazy road networks and interchanges and once you start looking, you can't unsee them. So in this video I want to show you 5 of the wildest spots I found. Some of them make sense once you know the background and some of them well, they're just pure chaos and I'm absolutely here for it. Alright, let's start here, on the west side of Manhattan. Look at this, there's the entrance to the Lincoln Tunnel. At first glance, it just looks like a couple of ramps, but zoom in a little closer and it's absolute madness. Roads on different levels, looping around each other, somehow fitting into these tightly packed Manhattan city blocks. And then, this is my favorite part, check out this building. At first, it looks like some kind of office building with a giant parking garage on top. But if you follow the ramps carefully, you'll see that buses actually drive into it. This is the Port Authority bus terminal. Every weekday around 8000 buses come through here, carrying nearly a quarter of a million people. And that's basically the busiest bus terminal in the world. And the only way it works is because the ramps plug directly into the building. What makes it even crazier is that the Lincoln Tunnel doesn't just have one entrance, there's actually a dedicated line called the exclusive bus lane that opens up every morning during rush hour. It's only for buses and it funnels them straight into their own tunnel entrance so they don't get stuck in car traffic. Just imagine all these people instead of riding the bus using their own car. I don't want to imagine honestly. And if you pull back a bit you'll notice how all of this is spread out over 6 but no rather 8 city blocks with ramps twisting and snaking between the skyscrapers. From above it almost looks impossible that this actually works. But this is New York. You run out of space? No problem. You just start stacking highways, garages and tunnels on top of each other. Until somehow it all fits. Up in the Bronx, right by the Harlem River, this is where I-95, one of America's most important highways, meets I-87. And this highway interchange looks absolutely wild and confusing. But to be honest, it's probably the best possible solution and a pretty compact design in general. There are actually two massive bridges here, standing almost side by side. One carries the through traffic on I-95 while the other is basically for local Bronx drivers, so they don't have to merge onto I-95 and get swallowed by the interstate traffic. From above, it honestly looks like they built the same bridge twice. In Germany we would say double is better or like you would say, better safe than sorry. And underneath all of that are rail tracks. 
You've got Metro North commuter trains and Amtrak squeezing through, while cars using all the looping ramps above. Add in the steep Bronx hills on one side and the Harlem River on the other side and you end up with bridges soaring nearly 40 meters high just to make it all work. Stuff like this fascinates me so much. Here's also where the history comes in. This is a part of the Cross Bronx Expressway one of Robert Moses' most infamous projects of the 1950s to push it through entire neighborhoods were bulldozed, splitting communities in half. But today it carries around 180,000 vehicles a day and that's just I-95. Absolute madness. This one might surprise you, but one of the wildest highway tangles in the New York era isn't actually in New York at all. It's right here in New Jersey around Newark International Airport. And just look at this. Loops and ramps as far as the eye can see. Highways splitting apart, toll plazas sitting right in the middle of it all. It's like a giant web of asphalt is wrapped around the airport. The weirdest part? There isn't just one interstate here. There are two, side by side. On the outside you've got I-95. And in the middle? the New Jersey Turnpike. They are technically the same route, but it's split into a cars only roadway and a cars and trucks roadway. So from above it looks like someone copied and pasted the highway. But let me know, which route do you prefer? The one with the trucks or the toll road without them? And of course it's not just the airport these roads feed. Right next door is the port of New York and Elizabeth, one of the biggest container ports in the entire country. So this whole area has to handle planes, ships, trucks and commuters all at once. No wonder it's a giant concrete mess. And a little fun fact, the turnpike here moves more than 250,000 vehicles a day and a massive chunk of that is freight. So even though Newark isn't New York, this knot of roads is where nearly all of New York's highway traffic squeezes through. For millions of travelers, this is the first and probably the most confusing thing they see on the way into the city. At least you have the breathtaking NYC skyline in the background. With that view, I could sit in a traffic jam forever. One of the most impressive highway connections in New York is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, linking Staten Island with Brooklyn. When it opened in 1964, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world and even today around 200k vehicles cross it every single day. To handle that much traffic, the bridge has two decks, an upper and a lower roadway. And that's not unusual in New York. Many of its bridges are double decked, simply because the demand is so high and there isn't room to build parallel bridges right next to each other. But at the Brooklyn side it gets really interesting. As soon as you leave the bridge, Interstate 278 splits into a whole system of ramps. Some connect directly into local streets of Bay Ridge while others feed into the Belt Parkway, the highway that circles the shoreline. But the Belt Parkway wasn't originally meant for heavy interstate traffic. It was built back in the 1930s as a scenic parkway for lighter cars. But thanks to the Verrazano, it's now one of the busiest commuter roads in the city. So here you've got a double-decked suspension bridge, an interstate highway and a local parkway all meeting in the same place. It's simply the perfect example of how New York squeezes massive amounts of traffic into very limited space. One of the strangest highways in New York has to be the FDR Drive on the east side of Manhattan. When you first zoom in, it's just like a normal waterfront highway. But if you move up into Upper Manhattan, it gets quite complex to be honest. Right here the highway is stacked on two levels, northbound on one deck, southbound on another. But we know the solution by now from NYC. But I also thought, why is there even a highway at all? 
Why not a park or open waterfront like on the west side? That would certainly give a bit more life quality than a stinky old road. The answer is actually pretty simple. Back in the 1930s and 40s, this area wasn't fancy riverfront property at all. It was full of old piers, warehouses and tenements. Robert Moses, Maji, the guy behind most of New York's roads, saw this as the perfect spot for a highway. But honestly, was there not a single perfect spot for a highway in New York for him? Anyway, it avoided tearing through the dense grid and a waterfront wasn't seen as a place people would want to relax. That's why instead of green space, the east side ended up with the FDR drive. Over the years though, some parts have been covered to make room for housing or finally parks. But up here in Upper Manhattan, you can really see how tightly it's squeezed in. Originally opened as the East River Drive, it runs the whole way from downtown at the Battery up to the Harlem River. It's one of those places where you really see how New York just forces infrastructure into whatever space it can find, especially in Manhattan. So that's five of the wildest highways and interchanges I found while poking around New York on Google Earth. And honestly, this is just scratching the surface. There are so many more crazy spots, bridges, tunnels and interchanges that are just as fascinating. If you'd like to see a part 2, let me know, hit that like and subscribe button. Because I'd be more than happy to keep exploring and share more of the city's road network with you. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, and want to see more on the topic, don't forget to support me on Patreon. That's one of the best ways to support the channel. To all of the wonderful people that already support me over there, thank you so so much. You're absolute legends. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, servus and bye bye.